The Sonoff SNZD02 temperature and humidity sensors are probably the best sensors we have on the portal. Um, they're available in two forms, this type without a display and this one with a display. They're basically the same, that's just got a display. Um, what makes them so good is that they actually do conform to Zigbee 3 standards, which means the mesh network works perfectly. And also the sleep mode and everything works perfectly. Uh, that means you might actually get the full four years battery life as promised by Sonoff. Combined with the IoT Portal Hub, you get an excellent room temperature, temperature and humidity data logger, along with the ability to send SMS, emails and get phone calls whenever the temperature or humidity go in the room goes outside of the balance. Everybody loves an unboxing, so let's unbox it. This is just the standard model, the P model, the SNZBO2P. Just open it up. It comes with the instructions, you won't need that. And there's the actual unit. So obviously when you wanna connect it, um, just pull that out. You don't even have to put it into discovery mode, then once you pull that out, it automatically goes into discovery mode. Um, that starts the battery off. That's keeping the battery from being used as it chipped. We also have this nice little kit. This holds it onto a wall, most likely. Um, oh, well, well, I can't open it, but we'll have a look. So it's got a little sticker. If you just want to be lazy and you want to stick that in the back, you can just straighten the wall. Alternatively, you can just put that little screw through this metal thing and you can feel the magnetism in it just sort of keeps it stuck. So you can sort of semi-permanently mount it. And if you want to just wander off with it, take it somewhere else. Moving on to the D model now. So this is obviously the D stands for display. If you haven't figured that one out. I don't know what the P stands for. That was surprisingly difficult to get in there. Anyway, it's the uh, same sort of thing. Get instructions, that's kind of useless. Uh, and this one just comes with a nice big sticky 3M thing stuck to the back so you can just stick it on a wall. It also disassembles from the holder. So again, you can just sort of wander off with it if you want to. And then once again, just like the other one. Oh, it's a little stand as well. I forgot about that. Yeah, little stand so you can just plonk it down like that. Um, just like the other one, pull that out, goes into discovery mode straight away and also saves the battery from draining whilst it's being shipped. This one actually we use quite a lot in the office, so I'm going to pull this one to bits. I'm not going to break it, I'm just going to pull it to bits. It's been in use for about six months, this one. I think you turn that, do you, to open it? Ooh, I don't like the sound of that. But let's figure this out. Maybe it's just this one, but that was surprisingly difficult to open. You can see how I kind of butchered the screw thing on it. And that's the battery, it's big in it. It's a... 2477 so yeah that's got quite a few amp hours or milliamp hours in it anyway that's been used for six months i've got oops sorry the camera that's a very crappy meter i've got here but it's got a backlight on so you can see the reading um let's see what voltage it's at now look how good the meter is so it's still on three volts that's been about six months that so barely used it oh didn't give up without a fight that one yeah there it is oh actually it's a different sensor than i expected you better go and like look at that on the microscope this is the part at the heart of the system so we can look at the specs of the sensor and um, it doesn't really matter about their electronics unless they've made a mistake it's really this that's crucial and you can see here on the just on the uh, left it says 0.2 degrees celsius accuracy um, and when it comes to the relative humidity Typical accuracy, 1.8% relative humidity. There never really is very much inside these things. There's the battery connectors and there's the switch that you press. And um, if we just look at the circuit board, so we it's got the SHT40, which is just a development. It's just a newer, a, a much smaller temperature sensor. Um, all this is about, all this cutout is about, is about taking any heat away from the circuit board, not sending it to the center. It's so low powered that you know there's hardly any heat generated by the circuit board in one of these things but it's really good practice anyway to do that um on the back we see it's got a mighty gecko 22 so that's what we're using you're using silicon labs on these and then that's the flash chip try and get it focused on that it doesn't really matter yeah it's focused in now so that's a mg22 main chip and the flash chip it's got the memory in it and as predicted it's just the circuit board pcb the only good thing about uh, taking one of these apart is you can see the orientation of the pcb and when we do some uh, range testing later, that could be important. You can see the switch just lines up with that, that there. So click, click, click. And then those little holes there, they're the air holes for the temperature and the humidity. That might make a difference depending on your application. Um, what does it say? So we haven't seen it. It says, if you look, it says we haven't seen it for 660 seconds. Let's see when we put the battery in, how long it takes to come back alive. Okay. 
Hopefully we'll get a reading out of it pretty soon. That's it. There we go. It's just reannounced itself back on the our, our Zigbee network here. Um, so not really else to do. The only thing it's got right there is this humidity. 69.4% humidity is probably about right after being in my hand. But it sent nonsense temperature, but that's okay. We'll get the right value in a minute or so. But yeah, even with uh, even when you yank the battery out there, it's it sorted itself out now. I think the humidity needs another another go, but um, even if you yank the battery out and dismantle it and video the innards for all to see, then you can see it still just comes back online to the network when you put the battery back in, which is really good. Now it's this thing here that was stopping me opening it. It's really quite vicious that, so I might just bend it in a little bit so it's easier to get the cover off in future. Anyway, there we go, just there in case you wondered. Yeah, it all went back together with a satisfying click when I turned the screwdriver in the back. It was very nice. I'm gonna set this up then to send me some text messages when it's outside of the temperature limit. Let's find it, uh, where, where, where are you? Where is he gone? CNC room, there it is obviously. Basically, I'm gonna put the message in. Um, see, that'll do, CMC room cold, that's that's fine. We don't care, that, that's enough. Um, I won't change that. You can put complex messages in, but I won't bother. We click on this icon here to set the values. So I'm gonna set these to, what's it on, 19 now. I'll chuck it in the fridge for the low, lower bound and I'll put it in my pockets for the upper bound. So that needs to be about 23, say. Okay, we'll set them for the temperatures. Now the easiest way to get it to over temperature really quickly is to just breathe in it. I, I expect that's gonna push the humidity up somewhat. Uh, we get it on the screen now, you see what it's doing. Oh, there we go. I think it's uh, straight away. Look, we got the email. IoT portal, CNC room too hot. I've, uh, I don't have the, um, the calls and the text messages set up on this because I get them all the time from our hub. But there you go, straight away, we've, we've gone over temperature. We have a little look, see what the temperature was. Uh, let's quickly go to the app. Ba -ba -ba -ba. I quickly loaded up the app on my phone. Well, it says it's 29.4 and I set it to 23, I think. So yeah, obviously over temperature. Look at the humidity as well. Oh, 92, it's getting even hotter. What I'll do now is go and chuck it in the fridge. I'll turn on the text message and call so we can see what happens when we do that, okay? Okay, let's toss it in there. It's normally a pile of circuit boards in there. Just to show you how I turned it on anyway, I'll just uh, go to this little checkbox on the side, set it to send text, make calls when it's on the low, it goes to the low side, so I'll just save that selection. All right, let's see what I did wrong. Okay, I've only got myself set as an admin. Even though I've got the Z there for the Zigbee stuff, I don't have myself set as an admin. So I'm gonna change that to admin text call. I had to cut that a little bit because I don't want to give away all the stats phone numbers. Well, right, so I set it to 10 and a half and 23 degrees this time. So a half a degree away. This time it's definitely got my number in. This time I'll definitely get the message. So I just hit record there because we're on 10.6 degrees. So we're really close now. Okay, it's dropped below 10.5 degrees. I'm expecting a phone call and a text message any second now. Oh, thank God for that. Hello, there you go. Make me look a bit stupid, wasn't it? Let's put the speaker on so you can hear what it says. Sensi room cold. Sensi room, okay, can't. Can say, repeat <laughs> it is saying CNC room. One circumference room. or zero to stop. And you can see we also got the text message there. So we've got the email and the text message and the phone call this time because it was set up correctly. To get an idea of the reliability of these sensors, if we click on, go to the, the device we've been using, which is CNC room, and we had, click on the display, that brings up the chart. Um, so if you're wondering why that's got, what that's got to do with reliability, if we zoom in on like a day, say yesterday when we weren't messing with it, what was gonna say yesterday? Yeah, from say midnight to two hours later, so we'll go back to um, 19th. So what we picked there, we picked, Pick between midnight and 246 yesterday it was uh, I'm just gonna click on redraw it's center as it is as it comes it's set to by our portal to give readings every 10 minutes this particular one um, so that's obviously less than 10 minutes between 9 minutes past and 13 minutes past again that's another that's that's shorter than that that was only six minutes if you start looking for the slightly larger gap so we had one there at 39 um, 43, that's still quite a small amount. It's really where, where it levels out. Oh, what we do notice is the only odd thing about this is like sometimes as it crosses zero, you get loads of readings all of a sudden. Um, so that is a weird anomaly within the Sonoff unit. But other than that though, uh, sometimes you get some slight double readings. That could well be the way we've got it set with the portal. But 
um, generally you never ever really see them missing that's it that's quite a slow change of temperature so this isn't being initiated necessarily by the gap because I think we put it for 0.3 seconds the gap that's only 0.2 seconds but the reason it sent us this uh, data point is because 10 minutes has passed so if we, if we examine the data and we do do this you can see that the they just never really uh, miss out like uh, periods where they should have sent data so we never see missing dots on the chart and that kind of just shows how reliable it is it's not like it most of the time it works it works every time so if we go through the charts you'll find it's very rare or I've never seen one where um, it's not actually sent the data every 10 minutes so like, that kind of just shows the reliability of these particular sensors the fact that you know they never the little dots in the chart are never missing <laughs>